The Kelpie Fat Track Pod, brought to you by Kelpie. Affordable race products designed to help you stay on track. Now onto the episode. G'day, Darcy here from uh, Kelpie. Uh, hello and welcome to another Kelpie Pod. I am your host and it's just me today. Uh, it's great to be back after a short break. Our last pod was with Dave Maddock from AFTN and what a great insight that was. Dave couldn't mention all the partnerships on the day, unfortunately, but we now know with his press releases on social media that there are some fantastic prizes on offer for the first five place getters in the Pro 450 class. Uh, so if you have a set of 19 inch wheels, you can be in the running for it, you know, so that's awesome. Um, so if you haven't heard about the Australian Flat Track Nationals, all the information can be found on the aftn.com.au. So check it out and, um, yeah, get into it. Get into it, support it, uh, what has the potential to be an awesome series. So let's check out all the prizes for each class. Um, oh, just before I do that, uh, I am now videoing the podcast. So if you like to put a face to the voice, you can check it out on the Kelpie YouTube channel. Um, I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. Uh, I can export this file as a WAV file as well. And yeah, it's just nice to be over to, to, to see me. Some people prefer to watch than just listen. So um, not that I'll be doing any party tricks or anything like that. Um, yeah, it's just sitting in my office and um, recording the pod. But you're welcome to go and check that out. And I thank you for your support once again. So back into the AFTN. Um, Pro 450 19 inch wheels. First prize is eight grand, a massive eight grand. It's for, for the points accumulated over the two days. So, um, yeah, if you, you manage to get on that top step, you'll be walking away with eight grand, which is fantastic. It's, it's probably the biggest prize money that I've seen in dirt track in Australia. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't been around that long, but, uh, yeah, definitely definitely some incentive there um second place is 1500 bucks not to be sneezed at either third is a thousand bucks uh fourth is 500 and fifth is 250 to me that's an amazing prize package there just for that one class all the other classes um have got great prize money as well pro twins first 750 second 500 third 300 not to be sneezed at this money, you know. Um, junior lights, so juniors are now entitled to get some um, payday, which is fantastic. Uh, first is 750 plus an entry into 2023. Um, I think it's just one entry. Don't don't quote me on how that works. I'm not 100 percent sure, but it's definitely an entry is also uh, into next season. Um, second place is 500 dollars. Third place is three hundred dollars. Fourth place is an entry into next season, which um, again fantastic prizes for uh, juniors. I don't think there's been prize money before in juniors. Um, I could be wrong on that. It's not factual, but I know that until recently that the rule was no prize money for juniors. But I'm not sure how how many clubs have given prize money out to juniors, but um, you know, it's a great help for the families and and kids and growing ups. It's not all about money, obviously, but it sure does help, especially with uh, cost of living going up and that sort of thing, um, and cost of racing. Uh, Pro Open first five hundred, second three hundred, and third one fifty. Now the clubman class is four fifty and two fifty. Um, you know, they're not a beginner class at all. They're um, Australian set up wheel set so 2118, 2119 uh, I know some people some people might relate Clubman to a beginner's class not at all, fantastic prize money, put it in perspective uh, Tom Drain and Jared Brook walked away with <coughs> I'm pretty sure it was 500 bucks an Australian title for getting first for for winning an Australian championship in their classes, MX Open and 450, and um, you know you could go there, battle it out, uh, 
and have a good chance at winning 500 bucks for first, second 300 and third 150 and it's the same in Clubman 250. So yeah, don't hold back, get out there. He's made these classes accessible for people that don't have 19 inch wheel sets uh, currently and you know, that's as good as any any um, dirt track meet prize, prize money. It's fantastic, if not better. So yeah, support it, get in there. Junior 85 are on 17 front and rear. Um, I've had a few people contacting me about 17s. We don't do junior stuff, unfortunately, at the moment, but I'm definitely going to be looking into this more. Uh, got some uh, info and feedback that your standard um, small wheel 17 front will fit on, you know, your CRF 150s and... and um, 85s and the likewise that sort of thing so you can always source one of them um yeah so first is 500 plus an entry into next season uh second 300 and third 150 so you can find all this info um actually i'm not 100 percent sure about the price package but you can find all the class info and everything on the aft uh, aftn.com.au make sure you put the .com.au because there is another AFT in which is some business and you'll be confused going, where the hell am I? What's going on here? So, um, yeah, yeah. So not only the races are up for some money, uh, you can also get a, um, just by entering, you'll be uh, in the chance to get a gate prize if you're a spectator. Um, yeah, that's uh, Kelpie's behind that one. So just just coming and watching, you can walk away with some cash, and it's a good amount. Uh, and there may be some other great uh, gate prizes as well, as far as I know. Um, I don't know, have all the refined details. I'm not sure how Dave is going to deal with that, but I'm sure um, you'll find out before next weekend. And if not, just rock up, and you will get something 100%. Uh, not everybody, obviously it's random, <laughs> don't, don't take that the wrong way, but you're definitely in the chance to um, walk away with some cash in your pocket. So it sounds fantastic and, and you know, Kelpie's really happy to be a partner and support this and um, uh, even if I didn't have a supplies business, um, I'd be finding a way to support it because I think this is the way forward, you all know that I think this is the way forward by now um yeah to link up the link up the world of flat track racing which uh, a little bit further on the pod we're going to go overseas a little bit and um you know not go into heaps of detail I'll just give you a couple website addresses and stuff that you can look into uh, if you're interested so here yeah, we've got a young racer zane kinner who's going to race our kelpie yz 450 in the pro class and um yeah, all going well. Hopefully, I'll be taking the team in um, 2023 to compete in all the rounds of the AFTN. Um, and that team is yet to be announced, but I've got a few riders already uh, with contracts in their hands. And um, yeah, hopefully, it's going to be made up of two pro riders, two development riders, and two reserve riders. So I'm really excited mm. about that. Uh, the two reserve riders will stand in for a pro rider if they get injured so that there's well there are other incentives and opportunities for them but there's no payday unless unless they actually ride so um but all in all hopefully i'll be helping six six riders you know which is a great start it's been a dream of mine for a long time so um yeah we're making it a reality so that's the best kind of dream uh, so let's move to, on to overseas. Uh, we're in America. They just finished their 2022 20, season, Progressive American Flat Track. Uh, you can check out all the results at www.americanflattrack.com. But uh, in case you haven't got the time to do that and you want to know, Jared Mees did it again. He, he won the Super Twins with some spectacular action, actually, like... Yeah, the racing, I really enjoyed it. I've got a fan choice package. You can buy the fan choice package. It's about 60 bucks for the season or something for the year, and, and um, which really isn't that much. And, um, yeah, you get to see everything. They do some special packages on there. It's, a, you know, little highlights and 
insider sort of stuff and that. Uh, Juicy Janus, he got the number one plate in the production. Twins took that away from Corey Texter, but Corey got the win on the night and uh, yeah, he just, just couldn't quite get the points, unfortunately, but he rode really well and, and you know, a great, great way for him to end his career, which he, he seems pretty, um, pretty persistent that... Yeah, he is retired, so <laughs> good on you, Corey. Uh, yeah, he's had a great career, and uh, excuse me, <coughs> it's hay fever season. It's um, yeah, we've had some really humid weather here. Just going off subject there, and um, yeah, it's playing up. I get hay fever and asthma, unfortunately. So um, yeah, so where was I? Yeah, yeah. So Corey, um, yeah, he's finished up his season. I think he ended up second. I actually forgot to have a look at that. I'm pretty sure he was second on there for production twins. Cody Cop won uh, the singles at the second to last round of the year, which was Cedar Lakes, I think it was. And um, yeah, but still exciting, really exciting racing through all three classes. And um, just really enjoyed the Volusia uh, stuff there, actually. It was really a great watch. It was funny. I was, I was watching it live and I was um, yeah, on day two, which is uh, our Sunday, the Saturday. Um, yeah, I was just, uh, they were just about to get into, um, get into the uh, main events. I, I had my brain goes into a bit of overload because, uh, you know, the terminology is a little bit different. Main events, not finals. Over here we have finals and semis and that sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, I, I've, yeah, my brain starts uh, melting down a little bit. But, um, yeah, they're main events and we're about to get kick off and I got a phone call. And, uh, look, I took it and it was great and I really enjoyed the phone call. But it's, oh, I want to watch, watch these races because I was really into it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the great thing about fan choice is you can go back and watch it later. So that's what I did when we got home uh, from the AFLW women's footy game in Ballarat here, which was fantastic. Um, yeah, so going over into the UK, you can check out dirttrackriders.co.uk. Um, so this is the official web page for the India Motorcycle Track Nationals in the UK. Um, and you can find all sorts of information from the rules to how to sign up, etc., etc. Uh, and you can follow along with what's going on with their blog page, which has all sorts of information and a link to George Pickering called. Um, oh, let me try that again. Where well, I've lost my notes. I, I write down a few notes so I sort of don't put too many ums and ahs in which I sort of fail it but anyway you know I'm still learning so <laughs> yeah so you can follow along with what's going on with the blog page uh, which has all sorts of information like a link to the film of George Pickering called Grounded Grounded is um, George is the owner sorry of the Greenfield track where the last round was they they also host another round I think it might have been the first round of the DTRA which is Dirt Track Riders Association and um, uh, it's only about three minutes long but it's worth a look it's pretty cool and I'm sure it will leave some of you drawling and wanting to get hold of your own property um, but you know most of you know I've got a track. It's hard work owning your own track, even though it's mine's only little and but it comes with lots of challenges. Machinery is a big one, and along with surface, you know. So, um, yeah, mine's yeah, I'm losing a lot of surface and really need to resurface it, which isn't cheap. You know, the hauling of material and the collecting of material and all the prices, obviously, with diesel prices going up and everything like that. Um, yeah, it just makes it even even more out of reach or feel even more out of reach um yeah they have footage of the past season on facebook on their uh, dtra page go check that out it's pretty cool there's all sorts of stuff on there they jeffrey carver jr there for the last round of scotty dubler um yeah and you know their web page is the best place to go if you're interested in actually racing and, and joining in um but the Facebook page is, is great too, always updating it and um, 
yeah, there's always news material on there. So another one that I've been looking at a bit on, on Facebook is Flat Track Canada, INC, Incorporated, or however you say that. Um, that's another great Facebook page to check out. Just recently finished their season and have been doing some fantastic rider spotlights on their page. Uh, I really enjoy watching those. and um, oh, oh, sorry, I really enjoy watching their races on YouTube. And they're definitely a, a good way to spend a rainy day. Um, you do, can get a bit of DTRA stuff on YouTube too. Um, so, yeah, they also have a, a website, and I'd recommend having a look at that one too, flattrackcanada.com. Uh, it's got lots of information on there too for you if you want to start racing in Canada. So check that out, or just if you're interested, you know, in their raw packages and that sort of thing. And that's what I have a look, a look at quite a bit. And, um, you know, the, the new series over here, you, you don't have to... America's sort of the one we all look up to, but you don't have to mirror it completely. We can do our own things too. They are slightly different things um you know track surfaces and that over here that come into play but i don't think it's as big a deal as a lot of people think you know, the track surface as long as it's safe conducted in a safe manner that's the main thing rider safety is always the high number one priority uh, so over in japan they do a bit of flat track um i was looking at an article earlier on um it's at pipeburn.com so p-i-p-e-b-u-r-n.com and um that's about the i was in 2019 had fun flat track day that they hosted on their dirt oval there and um i'd, I'd like to know if it's ongoing I, i'm trying to find out more about flat track in japan and uh this isn't um about the auto racing which is in japan i don't know if you know about auto racing it's conducted on um pavement ovals or concrete ovals or bitumen they call it in Australia ovals um, and it's all about gambling you know so they've got a funny handlebar in between a speedway flat tracker sort of motorcycle um, the ride is like it's really really strict and the ride is trained for years and yeah it's pretty crazy like um, yeah Guy Martin wanted to Harry is doing those series and stuff about uh, basically going on trips and trying try different motorsport and all that I can't remember what it was called but yeah he wanted to do it and they wouldn't even let him ride it you know so um, yeah so there's awesome awesome pics on that um, pipeburn.com article uh, I think you'd get a bit out of it um, some of the bikes are just mad yeah it's awesome so uh, I'm sure there's more info on the Japanese stuff so I'm keen to learn more I'll keep my eye out I'd actually um, made a friend on Facebook the other day but do you think I can remember his name or find him in my friend group so I'll keep searching until I do um, <coughs> and um, yeah so we've also online you can check out um, FIM World Track Championship which is the World Flat Track Championships um, mainly in Europe at the moment uh, it would be great to see this expand and, and you know maybe have a round in say New Zealand and uh, America and and Australia that, that well wherever you know UK if it was yeah actually going around the globe that'd be fantastic but it, like we we're saying you know about the AFTN and the racing and the NZ and they've all it's all got to start somewhere so yeah we can live with that for the moment but hopefully um, one of my goals is to get a, a team of two at least over there to of Australians to race. That I think that would be excellent, and um, I'm sure a couple of lucky riders would probably feel that way too. Um, so yeah, that's the FIM. You can check that out on FIMMoto.com, uh, and uh, in the menu you go to sports, then track, and then you can find all the info on that series from there. Um, you might have to click another link, but I think that's it. Uh, in New Zealand, uh, there's a great um, how to get started page at w, oh, www.thedirt.com, no, sorry, .co.nz. I'll say that again since I stuffed it up so badly. www.thedirt.co.nz. 
And that's well worth a look for anyone setting up a flat track bike, actually. And, um, yeah, uh, the difference, I guess, uh, we don't use tethers here, which is a dead man switch. So, you know, you put it around your wrist and once you fall off, it pops off, it kills the engine. We don't do that here in Australia. Um, not even sure. I know that Speedway bikes always did back home too. I don't know if they do over here because I haven't raced Speedway. I haven't really watched a lot of solo Speedway over here either, so I haven't noticed. Um, but, yeah, that's one of the, the things on there that I noticed that was quite different to here. And, obviously, it's 19, it's not 21, 18. Um, yeah, but the New Zealand scene is looking really great and there seems to be plenty of vids on YouTube so you can have a look and suss that out. Um, there's New Zealand flat track, flat track page on Facebook also, so go on there if you haven't already liked it and show them your love and um, have a look at what the boys and girls are doing over there. Um, I've been watching that quite closely for quite a while, probably a couple of years now I think, maybe more and um yeah it's growing and growing and um from my view from the laptop it seems to be growing really well in nz and and i believe they have a few tracks up and running in both islands now north and south island and uh yeah hopefully i'll be chatting to someone there really soon we've sort of teed it up just uh just got to get a lot of the time and so so that will probably be the next pod maybe i've got a couple sort of lined up but everything's not really set in concrete so that's why i thought i'd do this one um just me banging on a bit about some of the stuff i look at online and um you know hopefully it gives you gives you some ideas and gives you something to go and have a look at and i'm sure there's lots of things i haven't mentioned on here yet. there's um oh, there's a few ice racing pages and stuff which i'll look up the links and that and find i'd love to um i've got a couple contacts i've made on on facebook you know and it's this is the amazing thing about where we are now and and with technology and everything and you can just you know if you've got a common interest you can pretty much spark up relationships worldwide which is awesome you know and um uh pretty much everyone can write in english and uh, like my grammar and spelling is terrible anyway so I could be from anywhere in the in the world and and still would still be understood I think and um yeah just bridges that gap really well and and you can get talking there's guy um uh, I want to say in Denmark but I, I keep forgetting exactly where he is and and uh, they don't actually have any dirt tricks but they do lots of ice racing and it's so it looks so similar to our sort of big kidney sh shaped tracks and that i think they sometimes they have two or three rights in them though and oh man it just looks mad i'd love to have a crack and he really wants he he follows me a bit on facebook and he always saying oh i'd love to come and do that you know so yeah maybe we'll have to um visit each other one day and take each other racing i think that would be a pretty pretty cool thing to do uh, hopefully i'll be doing a bit of traveling next year uh, it's going to be i thought this year was going to be really huge i was meant to be going to, um, to china to meet the factory owners and that where i get the products made and um yeah it hasn't happened still because of their covid rules and you know china's a totally different place to hit over here um yeah so coming back home what do we got uh, the Harley Club of Victoria has just released that they're doing the Vic titles in December 3rd and 4th at Broadford. So, you, you know, guys, uh, that's uh, Australian Dirt Track 2118, 2119. If you want to rock up on 19s and show everyone how it's done, do it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. They won't discriminate and won't um, say, no, you can't ride. Uh, so let's make that one a good one. And, um, yeah, I know it's difficult, but make an effort to get to it. You know, the, um, the committees and and committee members and, and subcommittees and that at the Harley Club are probably all feeling a little bit burnt with the with Broadford One Hundred not going ahead, and and you know, so they're putting a lot of energy into this one too, and and want to make it a good one. So um, I'll be doing the commentating there. Uh, so, so that's how I want kelpie to to support the event and we're throwing a little bit of money the way as well but 
you know, I am basically the the money that I sponsor and donate and, and stuff. I'm working a couple part time jobs. It's not my business isn't quite the young. I don't know if you know much about business, but you usually don't make anything back for quite a few years. So um, yeah, that's where we are. But I I really am genuinely passionate about our sport, and I'm happy to go and. Um, I'm going to work a day or two and give the money to clubs and, and to riders, you know. So the um, the riders that will be um, racing for me next year will all be getting some sort of monetary com- contribution and, yeah, the prior, prior races will be paid per event. But, um, you know, I'm going to have to work a few extra hours to cover that, but I'm willing to do it because this is what I'd like to see for our young racers, or not just young racers, actually, I'm saying that. Um, anyone that has got the heart and I think deserves to, I'll give them a shot. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, on the podcast side of things, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we've only been going a month and a half about about that, um, I think it was the 8th of September or something like that it started it's now what 21st of October um, so yeah it's going really well we've um, we've had over 430 listens with an audience of over 100 listeners and now that's crossing five countries so Aussie, New Zealand, UK, US and Sweden um, so looking at expanding that more um, as tonight you know uh we're not just going to talk about Australia and New Zealand. I'm happy to talk about other countries and to to other countrymen. You know, so if you really, um, if you're as passionate about flat track as I am, feel free to reach out and we'll we'll have a chat about it in your area. You know, what's what's going on? What don't you like about it? What do you like about it? Anything like that? Why why you love racing? Um, <clears throat> Maybe you've started something up that you'd like people to to get behind. That's um, flat track based, you know. And um, yeah, uh, I may be a business, but I'll support other businesses too if we're like minded and and you know that I think they're genuine genuine people and actually love the sport. I have no problem with that at all. So um, yeah, I have a competitive nature, of course, but you know. Um, also, we will get a lot, 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 lot further along um, by helping each other out. And um, I think I've said it a few times before, nothing happens on your own. There's always someone else there that helps you, contacts, networking, all that sort of stuff. It's really important. And it is what will make the change and what brings the sport together. It's also, um, you know, you, you do hear that the, the flat track or dirt track um, family's a lot friendlier and it was funny actually that phone call that I got um, when I was trying to watch the racing last weekend um, I was told a story about someone that didn't feel that way but that's probably the first time that I've actually heard that um, yeah so it's interesting I've, I've been getting reached uh, reached out to by quite a few different people around Australia and um it's really heartwarming, uh, um, especially when you know they're telling me that it's resonating what I'm saying. And um, I think there's been, I think there's a few people out there that have all had the desire of flat track to become bigger in Australia, and um, have felt a bit alone. So you know, guys, you're not alone. This is what the pod's about is to get us all talking about it and get it noticed and you know like everything it's going to go up and down there's going to be highs and lows and but um you can guarantee i will be there in one form or another so i'm 100 committed to this and um yeah just really glad that people have been tuning in and embracing the podcast and uh and my products you know buying the products of help you flat track block not everyone seems to get the concept and that's fine um the person that rang me on saturday they get the concept you know it's just another option um to be able to run the block is a front and rear and on a 19 inch wheel set so you only have to use a 19 inch wheel set you're not swapping in and out the 17s and 
2118, you can just do it all on that. And, you know, I'm the first to say that it's not as fast as the Michelin. It's, um, yeah, the Michelin is the best tyre in the market. Uh, it's what all the fast guys use, and there's a reason for it. Ours isn't far off, but it is 19. It's bias. It's not radial. Um, yeah, different different compound. Um, not that not that softer is always the better, but it seems you know Michelin's just got the recipe right for dirt track. And the funny thing is, it's not even designed for that, but it just works, you know. And um, well. Uh, a lot of people say or ask will you make an 18 and the answer is no no the my focus is 19s and um, yeah if it doesn't take off here then I'll work out you know maybe we're just exporting them or importing them into um, the countries that will use them Canada can use a block um, New Zealand actually you can if the uh, how to get started is still correct, you can use a block there too. But it seems that everyone's gone to flat track tyres, um, probably because of the widths and you know that's I don't know maybe their fast guys are really fast on them there. Um, so you usually the trend is everyone will follow the fastest riders. <laughs> um, <coughs> I think that's pretty much in every sport. Um, yeah, you see someone that's winning all the time and and you start to mimic what they're and it makes sense you know what they're using so um but does that mean it's going to make you a hundred percent faster and make you beat them no it doesn't it you know it might help it might well most likely it will help you but um yeah, there's, there's a few, well, there's another podcast really, isn't there? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, I believe racing is um, a very, very strong mental game and, and you know, it takes time to learn that stuff. When you're starting racing, you're entering corners and your brain's telling you to go slower, you're going too fast, you know, so you retrain your brain to say, no, this sensation's okay, you know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> takes time takes a long time uh you have on days you have off days all that sort of stuff comes into play um and then there's bikes set up and um you know you might have started like myself uh i to be honest i never thought about it once i um i lost 13 kilos and, and yeah and didn't even think about my suspension and all that and it's the most obvious thing but um it just didn't work for me anymore because I'm 13 kilos lighter. <coughs> um, you know, so yeah, there's a lot going on. It's not just turning left and occasionally turning right. Um, yeah, so anyway, I think we'll wrap that one up. Remember, you can check it out now on uh, YouTube, or I hope you can. Oh, I haven't tried to upload one yet, so this will be that that one. I hope you're enjoying the shorter intro. Um the feedback I've had on that is everyone likes it. A couple of people said oh, it could be a little bit shorter, so we try a shorter one, see if that makes you happier. Um, and yeah, if you have any any questions or anything about bike setup or um, yeah, I, anything, any of our products, just reach out to me. Um, you can just do it through face our Facebook page. It's probably the easiest. Or, or the website, you can go to the website, um, join our mailing group. I actually haven't, I've been pretty slack. I haven't got on to, um, to, to sending out any email list yet. Um, but, you know, I will, I will do it. Uh, but if there's something that you really want and you want to want it in a hurry, just give me a, a, a message, a personal message, and um, I'll do my best to get back to you straight away. Normally I get back... Yeah, as soon as I see it. So, I, I, yeah, I don't always have my head around all these messenger apps. Sometimes, um, like oh, when was it? Two, two days ago, I think it was. This messenger was telling me there was a message, but do you think I could find the bloody thing? I keep clicking on um, mess. Oh, it was a message request, and. Um, yeah, I thought, well, that could be important, so I better, better check it out and respond. I like to respond quickly, so um, I couldn't find it. 
And I, yeah, I still actually don't know how I did find it, but I did find it, and uh, I managed to return <laughs> the message to the lady. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we couldn't help her out. It was to do a food van for for the event, uh, for the Vic titles. But um, yeah, you know, so I might be a little bit delayed because of my incompetence on messengers messenger apps. But uh, I will do my best to uh, return any queries as quickly as I can and you know so yeah a few more guests lined up so keep an ear out I'll try not to um, make too big a gap in between them and um, yeah keep it sideways go flat tracker